Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Science. Today we are actually going to be talking about one of the things that is most important to us as human beings and that is air. And specifically I'm going to be talking about air pressure, not necessarily what it's made up of or anything like that, that's a different episode, but rather air pressure. So one thing to note is that air, like all gases, the air in the atmosphere for example, behaves very similar to a liquid. Okay. So what gases and liquids do is they actually fill up the space that they occupy. A really good example of this is a balloon. Balloons, we blow up with our breath, carbon dioxide that we exhale, and it gets filled up and it becomes this shape. Just like if you fill anything with any sort of liquid or everything's pretty much filled with air, then it takes that shape, okay? But like I said, we're talking more about pressure today and specifically, the pressure that is created by air within an object as well as the air outside of the object. So right now, inside of this balloon there is air pressure pushing against the inside from the air that's within. Okay, And by the same token there is air outside that's pushing against it just like that. Okay, So one thing that many, many people know is if you take a needle and you take your balloon and you stab it, then it pops unfortunately, and it goes everywhere. And you may notice, right here, let me hold that a little closer. When you pop the balloon, it gets torn apart. Now, this is in contrast to if you were just to make a hole in a balloon and then pull out the needle or whatever, if you happen to do that, then you would have a full balloon that was fine. The thing is that with balloons, the sides of the balloon are extremely weak. They have very, very little latex in them. They don't have a lot of reinforcement, so it can't hold back all of the pressure. But if you know what you're doing, then you can take a needle and you can stick it through a balloon. This is something that a lot of magicians like to do and call it magic. But remember, just like many, many, many things, it's not magic, it's just good science. And it's all about knowing what you're doing, and then you can take your balloon and have your needle through it. And you have a nice little balloon kebab. Okay? Here's the difference. The important part is where you stab the balloon. If you stab the balloon in the right places, then you're going to get the needle to go straight through. So, if you ever look at the bottom of the balloon, this knot right here where you tie it off, it's a really, really dark color. By contrast, if you look on the other side, you have this little spot right here. That little spot is another side that has a lot of rubber. Those two spots are strong enough to hold back all of the air pressure held within the balloon. Because of that, if you stick the needle through that part, then it's fine. And you can just take the needle out, and then you have a complete balloon that's just deflated rather than torn to shreds because you popped it. Okay. By the same token, we're talking about pressure, you may have seen a lot of people, like circus acts, all that kind of stuff, lying down on beds of nails, such as this. Okay? Beds of nails are very important because they do what we call distribution of mass or distribution of force. I have my hand here pressing down on a balloon. Okay? Because there are so many nails, because there are so many points of pressure, not any one single nail is getting enough pressure to cause the balloon to pop, unless you press down extremely hard. If you press down with just moderate pressure, though, then it's okay. You can even put a little bit of weight on top of it, and you notice the balloon is distorting a good bit. Okay? In contrast, if you take a board with a single nail in it, then just like with our other balloon, it pops and it gets torn apart. Okay? So, pressure, like anything else, can be distributed. Right? That's why people can lie down on beds of nails and not be hurt. Right? So, we're going to move away from balloons now for a little bit and actually talk about flight. Because flight, 
as a principle is deeply, deeply, deeply involved in air pressure. Okay, there is a principle known as Bernoulli's principle, which essentially states that high pre or low pressure areas cause fast moving air. Okay, it makes sense. If you have low pressure and high pressure, everything from the high pressure is going to move very quickly over to the low pressure and not vice versa. If you know diffusion, it's the same thing. Air, things moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. Okay? We can demonstrate Bernoulli's principle with a ping pong ball and a hair dryer. Okay? This is something that you can easily do at home. Obviously, all you need is a hair dryer and a ping pong ball. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the hair dryer to create a low pressure system around the ball. When this happens, the ball is going to be able to just sort of hover in the air. Okay? It stays pretty much directly above the jet stream that's coming out of the hair dryer. Okay? And it creates a lift on the ball. Right? Just like with planes though, if you direct the flow of the air, if you move the air, then the object will move with it. So for example, if we move left and right, the ping pong ball goes wherever the airflow is. And you can actually get at pretty steep angles. And the ball still maintains its position relative to the hair dryer. Woo. Like I said, this principle is extremely important for flight because of the way that plane wings are designed. They're designed similar to a bird where the top is actually longer, okay? Because of the longer top portion of the wing, the air below it is going faster and therefore it's creating a low pressure system. When you have low pressure, you have more air going underneath the plane and if you have air going under the plane, that causes lift. And when you have lift, then you have planes that can fly. Woo. <laughs> so that's Bernoulli's principle, that's the basic of it. Uh, one of the other commonly done experiments with Bernoulli's principle is you have a big long bag and you can inflate it with one breath if you hold it about a foot away from you or about an arm's length away from you, two or three feet. And if you do that, then you blow in really hard and very quickly, the entire thing inflates in one breath. Okay? earlier that gases and liquids are very very similar in terms of pressure okay and I'm gonna demonstrate that using this all this is is just a bag of water it's exactly what it looks like okay and in this case I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did with the balloons initially with my needle okay I got a really nice sharp pencil here and all that you need to do is take the pencil take the bag and you just stick it through just like that okay just like before with our balloon, where we have a reinforced top and a bottom, this bag isn't necessarily reinforced anywhere, but the plastic on this is strong enough to hold back the water pressure. If the water was really, really deep, for example, if I had a bigger bag that was completely full and I poked a hole all the way at the bottom, then the pressure might be great enough to cause this to all fall out. But in this case, it's not. And like I said, that's how both gas and water behave very sim like fluids. Obviously, water behaves like a fluid because it is a fluid. But gas also acts the same way with air pressure. All right? The last little experiment that I'm going to show you today is another one that involves air pressure. In this case, using air pressure to make something fit into a space that it ordinarily wouldn't. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have a, a container with a relatively small opening. In this case, a flask with a little opening right there. Uh, I've got this on a couple of books so that you can see the bottom. You'll see why in just a second why you need to see the bottom. Right? Then we need something to put inside. In this case, I'm going to use this. This is a medium egg that's been hard boiled and you can see that it can just sort of rest right on top there. 
but you can't quite fit it in just by squeezing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a pressure differential to force the egg inside of the flask. Okay? The way that we're going to do that is with just a couple of materials and a little bit of knowledge. Right? Like I said, we're creating a vacuum. You may know that a vacuum is simply an absence of air. There's no air inside. So the easiest way to remove air from something is to burn it. Okay? If you have fire, fire consumes air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of paper towel here. And the reason I'm using paper towel for this is because it's absorbent. And I'll tell you why in just a second. You wrap it up nice and tight, just like that, so that it can fit very easily inside of the flask here. Okay, see, just like that. All right, and then what we're going to do is use a little bit of chemistry here inside of this bowl, right? Inside of this bowl is grain alcohol. Right? Grain alcohol is used in bartending most frequently to make flaming shots or flaming drinks, whatever it happens to be. And essentially the reason it's used for that is because it's 95% pure ethanol, which means that it burns. It burns very, very, very well. And because of that, we're going to use it with our paper towel. All right? Now before I get started with this, I have to tell you, don't try this at home. Do this only if you know what you're doing. All right? Even if you know what you're doing, you shouldn't do it. I barely know what I've been doing. I probably shouldn't do it, but it's darn entertaining, so I'm going to do it. Now, you may be asking, why don't I just light the paper towel on fire instead of using the ethanol? The reason I want to use the ethanol is because it burns without making ash and soot and smoke. If you have smoke and ashes and crap like that inside of this, it's going to snuff the flame out really quickly. Instead, with the ethanol, it burns just completely. It burns clean. It doesn't create all that smog and smoke. And because of that, I'm going to use it by dipping in the paper towel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and dip the paper towel. I'm going to put the egg in my mouth, partially to lubricate it, partially because I need both of my hands easily free, and partially because I need it to be easily accessible when I have to put it on the flask. Right? The last little note is I'm going to be using my brulee torch here to light the uh, the paper towel once it's coated. All right? All right, here we go. So, there you go. That's how, if you ever need to, you can use air pressure to get an egg into a flask. Okay? Now you can see in here we've got our egg and we've got our paper towel. And the obvious question is, first, how do we get it out? And second, how did it happen? Well, let's go backwards there. How did we get it in? Well, as I said, we created a vacuum. We used the fire inside of the flask to suck all the air out. Okay? And you might be thinking, well, you create a vacuum, so that means that it got sucked in. But remember, that's not exactly what happens, okay? Rather than it being sucked in, instead, all of the air is gone from the inside, so there's no air pushing up, okay? Instead, the only air pressure that the egg is experiencing is from above, pushing it down. Since we removed all the air from the bottom, it's, there's no sort of air cushion that's holding it up, so it gets pushed into the flask, okay? And we're going to use that same principle to get it out, right? Now you might be thinking, well, does that mean that we're going to suck all the air out of the room or just out of this general area? Not quite. Instead, we're still going to create a pressure differential, but we're going to do the exact opposite. Instead of decreasing the air pressure in front of where we want the egg to go, we're going to increase the air pressure where we want or where the egg is coming from. In other words, I'm just going to take this flask and I'm going to blow air into it. And that's going to create enough pressure to push it back out. Just like that. And now we've got our egg out of our flask. Our paper towel is still in there though. So, if I can show you this real quick. 
Let me see if I can get it out. There we go. You may notice that our paper towel is almost exactly the same as when it went in, except for just about right there, there's a couple of little scorch marks. Okay? And remember, I said I use the ethanol because it burns a lot better, it burns a lot cleaner, and this is what I was talking about. There's no nasty, messy ashes to clean out of my flask anymore. All right? So, that's my demonstration on using air pressure to suck an egg into a flask. And with that, that concludes my little video on air pressure and fluid pressure and Bernoulli's principle and all that kind of stuff that we talked about. I hope that you enjoyed it, and more importantly, I hope that you learned something and had a good time watching it. And until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Look at that. Burn myself a little bit.